Hey friends, and welcome to another episode of the Soul CEO Podcast, where we are passionate about helping network marketers and entrepreneurs build a profitable business without losing their family, their friends, or their soul. My name is Rachel McCark. This is episode 39, and today is a live coaching training that I did for a brand new team that had just joined a non-toxic kind of personal care company in network marketing, and their leaders asked me to come and train. And if this is something that'd be interesting for you, for your organization, regardless if it's network marketing or you have students or real estate agents, if you can put 25 people on a Zoom, I'd be happy to train for 20, 30, 40 minutes or so on any uh, particular subject. Just email me at asksoulceo at gmail.com. Asksoulceo at gmail.com. The link is in the show notes. And for today's episode, you're going to be hearing about really how to create personal momentum. And we kind of go all over the place and creating confidence, creating little victories, um, really treating your business like a business, having that end goal in mind and removing any distractions, particularly comparison. So we there's a lot of stuff here, a lot of stuff to unpack. So grab a pen and piece of paper because I think it's one of those shows that you're going to want to take a ton of notes. If you're brand new to the podcast, uh, please subscribe, hit five star rating and leave a review or follow. I think Apple Podcasts is sharing it to follow. Whatever, guys, make sure that you're getting the notifications for any new podcast that hits. I believe that this is going to bless your life and your business. I want to give a little shout out to one of my subscribers on Apple Podcasts. Uh, Name is Holla at your girl. (laughs) She said, so good. Five stars. I just started listening when Fraser, that's Fraser Brooks, introduced her on his podcast. So thankful I found her. She gives so much gold and value to your business. I resonate with her about spirituality. I feel like it's hard to come by dash running a business with a kingdom mindset. Love, love, love this podcast. Thank you so much. Holla, holla. Well, I'm hollering back at you. That is amazing. And guys, I appreciate you so much. Hit me up on social media. Let me know what you're loving about this podcast. And if there's any particular topics you'd love for me to dive into, I am here to serve. Remember, this is free, free. So I'm just doing it for the love. And if you guys could leave the review is the more uh, that we trend and impact more people's lives. Okay. Okay. Enough, 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 enough. Let's dive into today's show. I hope you enjoy. Let Rachel take it away for us. Oh, thank you so much, Caitlin. Hi, guys. Good evening. I know we have a, uh, oh, I need to unmute myself. Okay. Hi. I'm so excited to be here. Good evening, guys. And I'm so pumped. By the way, if Caitlin hasn't explained, I'm like a network marketing robot and I feed off of your energy. So like my life units are based on your guys's like expression to me in the chat. Like the more you give to me, the more that I'm just going to like, I like, woo, like next level, okay? Uh, first off, thank you so much for inviting me onto this call. I know that Beth, Miranda, Caitlin, you guys are doing some really phenomenal things. And I wanna encourage you guys that you are with the right leadership. You are with the right leadership, the right hearts, people that really want you to have a breakthrough. And if you guys have ever heard me train at all, whether it's listening to the podcast, I say it on every single call, the best leaders are excellent students. So hopefully you've come prepared, like ready to take notes. This is actually my notebook. I, we have a culture in our team that we have a either a company or a team notebook. And on every single call, you'd never show up without your journal. And so the best leaders are excellent students. And I want you guys to come to every call on this in this organization expectant. Expectant to learn, expectant to get something and a nugget. Now, not everything I'm gonna say is gonna apply to you. You're like, yeah, 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 Rachel, I heard that a million times. In fact, some top leader in this company said that on the last week's call, I get it, that's old school, that's fine. Repetition is the mother of all skill, okay? But there might be something, and I remember even the beginning stage of my network marketing career, there was usually a, a random moment where I'd be like hearing like a tiff or a little trick or like a little tactic or a story and it changed the trajectory of my life. It changed the entire trajectory of my business. And so come ready to grow. Now, I know that we have a lot of different levels on this call, which makes it exciting and yet super challenging. Some of you guys have been in for a really long time. A large amount of you guys have just got started in the last like 90 days or so. And so I hope today what I really want to share with you is to get into personal momentum. 
how to get into personal momentum over the next 90 days so that you can create a story that is going to be the one that you tell over and over and over leading into the summer, into the fall, and closing out this year. I want 2021 to be your breakthrough year. And it starts with making the decision. And I have a few notes here today to talk about what is it going to be? What is going to be that flip of the switch in your mindset, your daily method of operation, the way that you start, uh, the filter you put on to your business, your prospects, this is really where it begins. A little bit of background about me. I have been in this industry for 15 years. Oh, holy moly. I was like only a couple more years and it's like, it's like my entire adult life. And I'd love to say that I am, um, I want you guys to know I am average. I'm not normal. <laughs> Nothing about me is normal. I am like six feet tall. I'm a giraffe, right? I'm like a six one wingspan. Nothing about me is normal, but I'm very average. I grew up in a middle class family. I have two sets of parents. They divorced when I was like one years old, but don't cry for me. They're amazing parents. I got double the hugs, double the kisses, double the birthday parties, all that. And my parents, they lived a very average life. Like my mom was in corporate America, which was nine to five, which you know is really eight to six. Um, I saw her basically living feast to famine, depending on how the real estate market was. If the real estate market in Wisconsin was really good, she'd cash out, refinance her home, and we'd have like a better Christmas that year or a newer car. And she did that cycle my entire life growing up. My dad, on the other hand, my real father, my biological father, was a brick and mortar business owner. And he's still today, even before I existed, I was a twinkle in their eye. And now to this day, he still runs a multi-million dollar salon in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And so I've seen them both sacrifice for their careers. And at a very early age, I wanted nothing to do with it. How many of you guys have parents that you're like, no, I don't want that life. I don't want that struggle, right? Like your best like, no, that's not for me. So we have those issues where it's like, um, I just really, I'm not really feeling that, but at 18, 19, 20 years old, I didn't know there was other options. I thought there was just job or start a business. And so I was doing the job thing. I was working in retail for a bipolar boss, working 50 to 60 hours a week, commuting two and a half hours a day. <laughs> I was miserable. And I was like, how am I going to start a business? I was 21. I had debt already. I had $10,000 in debt, student loans and medical debt. I had... I. I I'm kind of smart, but I don't really have ideas. So like I couldn't really invent anything. I can't lie, so I'm not gonna be a politician. I'm tall, but I can't dunk, so I'm not gonna be an athlete. There was not many options for me to create success, and then I got dragged down to a meeting. How many of you guys remember your first meeting? Maybe you guys, it was like last week. You're like, you're like Jennifer's like, yeah, it was me last week. I was on the Zoom, and now I'm signed up in Pure Haven. I'm like, yeah, let's do this. But I remember my first meeting at 21, 15 years ago, and I saw leverage. I saw the three by three by three by three by three by three plan. I saw the concept of residual income and I was like, oh, I don't have that. I don't have linear income in my salary in retail. Uh, this sounds good. Sign me up. And I was an epic raving failure for five years. I was a not-for-profit MLM. How many guys have ever had a not-for-profit MLM? <laughs> yeah, that was me for five years. Um, I'd make a thousand and then I'd spend a thousand. I'd make a thousand, then I'd go to an event. And so I kind of joked that my first five years, Caitlin was my bachelor's in MLM. I got, I'm a college dropout, but I got my bachelor's degree in, in, in MLM. And now I say I have an MBA. I got my MBA before my PhD. I got my massive bank account because I was poor, hungry, and desperate. It was the last 10 years that life changed tremendously for me. It was partnering like you guys the right time with the right company with the right team and the right message and I went all in and it was that decision to divorce my excuses and marry my results that I went from struggle bus network marketer to top female income earner in my company in 16 months I went from literally zero to a million dollars a year by the time I was 27 years old I went on to do $100 million in revenue with that company. Unfortunately, the company was ran not so well. <laughs> Didn't have inte great integrity at the leadership. They ran the company into the ground. And now here in my, in, my, in my current company. And so I want you guys to know your past does not dictate your future. If you have been playing in this industry, even if this is your 10th company, 
It doesn't matter if you have been in this company for months or even a couple of years now, and you've been sitting here kind of coming onto the Zooms, you know, maybe like, you know, playing around, loving the products, applying the products, smelling the products, getting all the non-tox or get the toxic stuff out of your house. And, you know, now like, you know, replicating, get all the good, you're pure havening your, your household. If you're doing all that, but you can decide today that, you know what, today I launch. See, for most network marketers, there's two days. There's the day they enroll and the day they start. They're not usually the same day. So don't beat yourself up if you've been playing, if you've been thinking about it, if you've been contemplating, if you've been in analysis paralysis, if you've been caring too much what people think, if you've been kind of holding on to the baggage of past failures or maybe thinking too much of what your boss is going to say, if you post something on Facebook or what Susie from high school is going to say when you talk about your amazing, you know, essential oil-based products or like all the natural, all the good, I was looking at your ingredients. I was like, oh, well, I might need to order that. I mean, I need that too, right? So like, and you're like worried and thinking, about it's okay we can decide today so the first step of creating personal momentum into your business to go for me like literally failure like I was so bad my upline's like wow you're really bad at this he said to me my own my sponsor who was like 50 years old I was like 21 little pipsqueak blonde girl and he's like you might be the worst I've ever seen I'm like Oh God, like don't hold back. Like it's so painful. Like he did like, could you imagine that? And I'm just like, yeah, I'm really bad at this. Help, help. And so he shoved books and tapes down my throat. And back then it was CDs. I'm dating myself here. <laughs> you guys remember CDs, like personal development on CDs? Any of you guys use like to cassette tapes? I had like a Jim Rohn, like cassette tape library. I'm really dating myself. I am a millennial, but I am an elder millennial. <laughs> okay. I am an elder millennial, so I'm here to educate. I teach all the millennials and like the newbies, like the Gen Ys. I'm like, let me teach you about the cassette tape, <laughs> okay? So even if you struggled, it doesn't mean that you need to struggle. Number one is you have to start with the end in mind. You have to start with the end in mind. And this is so challenging because as adults, our ability to use our imagination to dream and expand what it is possible has been severely stipend. It has been stipend. You know, if you think about the kids, how many guys got kids? Where are my moms at? I see a little baby. Jennifer's like rocking her baby right there. Beth's like, yeah, I got baby. Maria's got her baby. I got even pictures of Amanda. Like Amanda's got her little toddler in her photo, like her little boy in her photo right there. That's awesome. When we think about our kids, I don't have, I'm, I'm without child, but I have nieces and nephews. When I think about children, when they're two, three, four, five years old, seven years old, you ask them what they want to do when they grow up. They're like, I'm going to be an astronaut. I'm going to solve world peace, right? They're like, I'm going to be president of the United States. I'm like, I don't know if I'd recommend that job. That seems very, very stressful, but okay. But like they, like they have this vision of what they want to do. You give them some cardboard and a sheet and all of a sudden there's Fort Knox in your living room. They just expand. They're like, this is what I'm going to do. This is where I'm going to go. This is the impact I'm going to make. And then we hit like high school. And you're like, I'm going to be a singer. And they're like, no, you're not. I'm going to be an artist. Oh, you kind of suck. You know, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. Uh, no, your grades aren't good enough. We get beat down with the pressures of this world. We get so afraid of rejection, it holds us back. But we have to start with the end in mind. Have you taken a moment to really sit down and design your dream life? I'm talking about writing it down. I'm talking about getting with a journal and actually putting pen to paper from the moment you wake up your eyes wake up, what do you see? Where do you live? Who's next to you? Or when you look out of your master bedroom, is it, is it an ocean? Is it mountains? Is it a city like penthouse apartment in New York City? Is it, you know, often like farmland? Some of you guys wanna like, you know, get self-sufficient and <laughs> get out of Dodge and have your own acreage and like collect your own water and stuff like that. What do you see? You know, where do you live? When you go down, like what does your perfect day look like? Who are you talking to? What are you eating? What are you wearing? What's the body that you have? Have you actually said, you know what, this is the, the impact I want to make philanthropically? You know, the amazing thing, write this down, network marketing is one of the best vehicles to fund your passion and to fund your purpose. 
So I know many of us have a God, a little God shaped, a little God planted dream in our heart. Maybe it's orphanages. Maybe it's anti-human trafficking. Maybe it's the homeless. Maybe it's underprivileged kids or communities at risk. I know for me, my husband, we for the last, well, for me personally, for the last Going on eight, nine years, I have been raising awareness against human trafficking and especially child sex slavery. Nobody wanted to talk about that in the last seven years until the last year. Now it's becoming more mainstream. People are aware they're fighting for it. But I've been working with organizations for years. And it's great to be to volunteer time. We do that. You know, I don't go post about it on Facebook. Guys, don't don't be that person. You don't need to post about your charity. I don't I don't post the times I'm feeding the homeless. In, in St. Paul, Minnesota at 5 a.m. at the homeless shelter. No, I don't post about that. I do that though. And so you can do that with your time, but you know the impact with money? People are like, oh, you're all about the money and they'll even get you guys like, Miranda, you're gonna have people be like, Miranda, you've changed. You're all about the money. You know what feeds orphans? Money. You know what builds hospitals for children that are suffering from leukemia? Money. You know what clothes the homeless? You know what uh, uh, goes and supports the widows and the battered women that have been in an abusive relationship that just need tampons and panty liners and, and deodorant? It was so cool. Like I even switched my credit card. I get all this free Amazon bucks now. Just a little fun fact. You guys should get a credit card that gives you like Amazon bucks. So all of a sudden I, I, I went into my Amazon bucks over the Christmas holidays. I, well, I was going into Amazon to do some shopping. Unless we were all going to do some prime. Okay. And so I'm doing some shopping and all of a sudden it's like, your balance is $4,500. I'm like, what? I had all these Amazon bucks. So of course I'm like, you know, buying some stuff for the family and things like that. But I was like, I don't, I'm like, I need stuff. Sure. We all, yeah, I could use some more clothes or whatever. I was like, so cool. Like, call up the local women's shelters. What do you guys need right now? Okay, we need like extra large bras. We need, we need socks. We need tampons. We need body wash, full size unopened body washes. So I was like, all right, buy lots on Amazon, send it to them. Money does that. And so there are going to be haters. It's like, you might not want, hi guys, I am not. I'm the contrarian network marketer. <laughs> I've lived in the $2 million house. I hope you all get to live in a $2 million house so that you can find out it's not that great. It's very expensive. It's a lot to clean. I had seven toilets. There was two of us. And somehow they all got dirty. So like, I I can't wait for you guys to all like get to that level, get to this level and realize that making millions is wonderful. It's, It's fantastic to have options and autonomy but it's not really what it's about, but what you can give and how you can give back. So what is the vision? You start with the end in mind. What's the vision that you want to create? What's the lifestyle? Where do you want to give back? You know what? I don't need things. I have a 10 year old car. Yeah. The millionaire. I drive a 10 year old paid off truck. Probably wasn't expecting that. No, it's not a Ferrari. I don't have a Lamborghini. It is an old Range Rover because that was my dream car. And I don't like the new models. They're all squashed in the back. They look dumb. I like the old ones. My car's got 125,000 miles on it. My husband, my new husband, I got married during COVID. He's like, you want to go test drive a G-Wagon? Because that's really my dream car. I was like, gosh, like long-term goals, but I'm not really a car person. I'm like, oh, you know, I look crazy. Like maybe I get it, right? He's like, let's go test drive it. I'm like, no, I'm just going to drive this car into the ground. I love not having a car payment. I love, I want you guys all to be debt free. Guys, go in the chat, let me know, drop one. You wanna be debt free? It is so awesome. Let me tell you this, to owe nobody nothing, it is the best. I want that all for you. Start with the end in mind. Many of you guys, and many of us, us, we naturally wanna know how. Hey, Miranda, tell me. Hey, Beth, tell me. Caitlin, what's the DMO? What's the system? Tell me exactly. And it's like, it's almost like you're seeking the minimum. Okay, what is exactly how many messages a day I need to send? How many friend requests exactly a day do I need to send? How many posts on Instagram do I need to do? How many TikToks are really like, you're looking for the DMO, the how. Okay, exactly. How do I say this? How do I language it? What's the script? I'm not saying that tactics aren't important. Like we need skill set. But here's the truth. Write this down. 
When the why is strong enough, the how becomes clear. When the why is strong enough, the how becomes clear. I want you to think about the most important person in your life right now, precious person. Maybe think of innocent person. Maybe think about your baby, your youngest. If they're grown, think about them when they were little, before they got all obnoxious, right? <laughs> Prepubescent, hormonal. I want you to think about like your little perfect baby toddler boy and how cute he was back before he got all sticky and messy, right? And smelly. Now think about just that perfect little human that you love so much. If let's say an example that a bad guy or a bad group of guys stole your toddler, your precious baby, and they said, and they're mean, they're going to do mean things to him or her. And they said, you cannot have your child back till you sell $5,000 in product. How fast would you do it? How fast? Your baby is in the hands of terrorists. Would you scroll Facebook? Would you be in the scroll hole? Would you binge on Netflix? Would you be watching The Bachelor or The Grammys? <sighs> really? No. You would be calling everyone. You'd be like, Amanda, buy me deodorant. Hey, you know, uh, Michelle, you got to pick up the face wash. Like, buy it now. Do me a favor. Get started. You're buying stuff anyways that's so horrible for you. Let me show you a better way. You would sell that so crazy. The same thing goes, like, let's say, guys, go in the chat. Let me know. What's your dream car? What's your dream car? I want to know. So mine was, I did say it is a G-Wagon. But again, I'm not, I'm not really, I am experience motivated like a typical millennial. I'm not very thing motivated. I live in a very standard home in a middle class neighborhood. Again, most of you guys live in nicer homes than me. And I'm the millionaire on the line. It just because it just doesn't, like, I'd rather travel. I've been to 22 countries paid for by my network marketing company. I've lived in two other continents, right? So I'd rather travel. I want to eat my way around the world. Actually, that's my motivation. <laughs> I want to eat all the food. I'm like, I can't wait for things to open up. I'm like, I need to go to Vietnam and eat some pho. Like, that's all I want. Like, bring me there now. By the way, the best food I've ever had is Italy. By far, 100%. And this is gluten intolerance. I don't even care. Extra gluten's on my pasta, Primavera. Extra gluten's in the lasagna. I don't care how fat or irritated I get. It is the best. And in fact, it's weird. I actually, in Europe, I never get any really issues. Uh, an old Chevy Restored, a Tahoe, a Range Rover, a Lexus. Okay, Range Rover, Range Rover. Yeah, my, it's so funny. I met my husband on eHarmony on our first date. We both found out we both have Range Rovers. I was like, the same year, 2011 Range Rovers. I was like, this is serendipity. Let me tell you that. If I were to drive up and I said, hey, uh, you know, Maria, I have your dream Lexus. Miranda, I have your Range Rover. Bridget, I have your tricked out Tahoe. I have a feeling you have a family. <laughs> if Bridget's like, I want a Tahoe, she's like, I need that. I need that with the, the little screens on the back of the headsets. Keep those kids quiet, right? We need like, that's a truck. That's a, that's a boat that you're driving. If I were to come up rolling in your house with that, that Tahoe, that Range Rover, that Lexus, and I said, I'm in your driveway, dream car. What's the new Tahoe? I mean, like $90,000, $80,000 all tricked out with the rims and the things and the, the electronics package. And I said, listen, I got this car. I can't keep it. It's not for me. I just don't want to just give it away. But Judy, if you gave me five grand, five grand, you could have it. It's your dream Chevy. It's your dream old restored car. It's your dream Range Rover. Sport, super loaded. Tony's is a sport. It's like, it's fast. How fast would you come up with the five grand? See, it's the vision. It's the why. It's, it's like, it's got to be that self-motivation. It becomes clear. To go into personal momentum, number two, I want you to understand that this entire business is launching and relaunching. It's launching and relaunching. Write this down. It is not a marathon. It is not a sprint. This business is a marathon of sprints. And unfortunately, because most of us come from an employee mindset, we are waiting for somebody to tell us what to do. We're clocking in. We're clocking out. We're doing the very minimum. I mean, honestly, let's be clear. I do the very minimum just to get my check and not very much more than that, especially if you're not working on commissions, like just enough not to get fired. 
to switch to an employee, uh, an entrepreneurial mindset, the minimum mindset of an employee is you're thinking like, what's the least I can do? And well, how much vacation time can I get? An employee, an employee mindset wants balance. They leave their job, they're escaping their job, and they want balance. They're always seeking balance. An entrepreneur understands that it is a season and it's a series of imbalance periods. Now, I have gotten now to the level, the last five years, I have never worked more than 25 hours a week. And I'm always embarrassed to kind of tell people that because it's not like I have another job. I just choose not to work more than five hours a day five days a week. Why? I love my life. I love my husband. I love my friends. I love traveling. And then really, I love my morning time. Like those first four or five hours in the day, I get a lot done. I'm reading. I'm, I'm training for a 5K right now. I mean, I walk a 5K every day, but now I'm going to be running one. Please pray for me. Keep me in your prayers. Where are my prayer worries at? Because like, honestly, I don't know what I was thinking. I had a brief moment's lapse of sanity and I've, my husband's a marathon runner and I'm like, I'll do one with you. And so I signed up and I'm like, now every morning I'm like flailing, trying to jog. Like my lungs are burning. I'm like, I'm actually like literally trying to tell myself, maybe I have COVID. And I'm like, no, I don't. I just am severely out of shape. Okay. So uh, where was I that? Anyways, it's a marathon of sprints. It's an absolute marathon of sprints. And it's one of those things where you're going to be super, super imbalanced because there were times, guys, that I did work insane. I did work insane. You're going to have a balance is a series of imbalanced periods. I, I really do preach that it's God first, then family, then business. That is the priority of my life. I teach that to everywhere that I go and I talk about it all the time on my podcast. But I'm talking about, we don't want you to make mistakes or I don't want you to make mistakes, but I need you to make sacrifices. If in the next 90 days, you want to create personal momentum, Maria, you need to make sacrifices. That means staying up a little later, getting up a little earlier, canceling cable, I, I am like dead serious that if anybody on this line is still watching TV, like it is the air machine, AIR, automatic income reducing. And Netflix counts. Number one, it's trash. Number two, it's ultra trash. But like it's vulgar, it's profane, and it makes you usually pretty unhappy with your life. Oh, well, I just watched The Bachelor. Okay, to watch these unrealistic expectations of these dramatic love affairs. Oh, I just re watch romantic comedies. Okay, you're going to see all this Hollywood magic of these people that are falling in love. And then you're going to look at your spouse. You're like, when's the last time you showered? It doesn't serve us. For seven months in my first run, my first big run in network marketing 10 years ago, seven months, I didn't lift up my head. I was severely imbalanced. One day I watched TV is because I got food poisoning. <laughs> so I was taken down. I was like, there's no, there's no hope for me to do anything besides the television and the bathroom. The stomach flu or something. It was, I was awful. For seven months. Seven months. I didn't see anybody. I didn't go anywhere. I just built. I just crushed. I ran from zero to 50 grand a month in seven months. I made huge sacrifices. There were times, guys, that I missed family events. Now, a sacrifice is different than a mistake. And this is important for the moms online. I see a lot of moms here. A mistake is saying no to going with your friends and their family and the kids to the lake and staying at home and scrolling on Facebook. That's a mistake. A mistake is taking your kids to the park and scrolling on social media or messaging people when you should be ultra focused on them because that's your one hour together when they get home from work or from school. I'm not asking you to make mistakes. I'm not asking you to during family time, during dinner time to be also on your phone. That's a mistake. But I'm asking you to make a sacrifice. What's a sacrifice? Well, 
my best friend, um, when she was getting started in this, in, in her first network marketing business, she's made millions. She's my running partner. She made like six and a half million dollars in this industry. She was full time and her husband had both full time six figure jobs. She was in mortgages and he was a food broker. And at the time, this was all home meetings. So they were in a juice company and it was all home presentation. So she needed three nights a week to be at a different home building the business. Well, the sacrifice was talking with her husband, with their young children and saying, listen, you're in two basketball leagues. I need you to cut down to just one night a week because I need you home with the kids so I can go build this business. Now, she didn't ask him to get rid of something and then didn't go build the business. That would have been a mistake. She went and in one year created an income of $30,000 a month. She bought herself out of her job and a few years later bought him with her time, energy, money, all that sort of stuff out of his job. Now they live in Paradise Valley, Arizona here in Scottsdale. They live in a six and a half, you know, six and a half thousand square foot Tuscan mansion worth like $3 million. And like, you live in a resort. Like, I don't even know why you travel. <laughs> I'm like, if I lived in this house, I'm like, holy cow. I call it like Resort Wilson. It's like the, the W Hotel. It is launching and relaunching. You hear all the time that the best thing about network marketing and your guys' comp plan specifically, it's very affordable to get started, right? But it's also the worst thing about this business. Because it's so inexpensive, there's such a low barrier of entry, nobody takes it seriously. My question to you is, are you treating this like the million dollar a year business that it will be? And if you knew, if you knew in your knower that you were taking this to six and then eventually seven figures, it might take you years, might take you a decade to get there. It took me about seven in my industry to get to, or my career to get to seven figures. If it, if you knew that it was going to be there someday, how would you treat it now? How would you show up now? How would you posture in conversations? If you had a million dollar business, what would your confidence be? Well, how would you be showing up on Facebook Live? How many lives would you be doing every single day? How many reels or or TikToks would you be doing? I'm big on social media, so I'm I'm always promoting like that. How many samples would you be sending out? How many new conversations? What would your emotional intelligence be with your team? What would your emotional stability be with the ups and downs of your business? How focused would you be? Would you be letting distractions get to you if you were running a million dollar business? Would you have a million dollar business plan? Uh, case in point, Subway. A friend of mine owned a Subway franchise in Northern California. And Subway is a really interesting franchise. It can vary cost wise. It's about $100,000 to sub- start a Subway franchise. They tell you, by the way, you need seven to eight of them to create a decent income, like a, a multiple six figure income. Seven to eight headaches. Seven to eight headaches. You're putting your entire net worth, all the cash you own, leveraging debt to run a business, baking bread, and working with pimple-faced teenagers. I'm, it's, a, it's a no for me, dog, right? So Subway, my question to you is, you, you, let's say hypothetically, Amanda, Judy, Caitlin, Sheila, you put $100,000 into a Subway, and that's all the money you have left. No marketing dollars, no advertising dollars. It's you, your bread, your meats, your cheeses, and Tom, the pimple-faced teenager that you hired. And all of a sudden, what do you do? How are you going to build your business? How are you going to sell some subs? Well, you're going to make a list of names, right? But you're not going to rely on your parents and your grandma and your neighbor they, there's only five, so many $5 footlongs that they could buy. You need a marketing plan. You need a launch strategy. You need to have a ribbon cutting or several. I mean, tell me, what would you guys be doing? You would be doing anything. You just put $100,000. You took a home equity line of credit on your house. You would be stopping at nothing to get as a, you'd be going down Main Street with flyers. You'd go into the insurance agency. You'd go into the Allstate agency. You'd go into the real estate, the Remax company, the, the, the cell phone provider. You'd be walking in down the street. Hey, the bakery. Hey, I know you guys sell pies. We sell subs over there. If you guys need any subs or like any corporate dealings, we do party platters. Here, here's a $5 footlong, a free soda, free chip meal deal. I mean, you'd be like everywhere, right? You'd have a Facebook page. You'd have a Yelp page. You'd have a LinkedIn 
page. You'd be doing TikToks, making little fun little sub creations. You just put $100,000 into a business. So why are you not going all out in anything possible to drive this business? Another case in point, a farmer. I recently had a, a leader, I did a mentoring call, and one of the leaders was like, oh, you know, I've been doing this for years, and she's making a solid income. And she's like, and I know that I need to get new people, and I know I need to be recruiting, but like, am I gonna have to do this for forever? And I was like, does a farmer say, oh gosh, every year do I have to plant again? Like, it's just the craziest thing to me. Yeah, you get, you get to do this for forever. You get to inspire for forever. You get to lead. You get to have leverage. There is nothing sexier than a network marketing business that is on point. Doesn't have to be at my level. But man, I tell you, when you got that mailbox money coming in, five, six grand a month, and it like, it's autopilot. One of my, one of my leaders in my company, she's been in for 10 years, right? A plane, a plane. And she's making about 200000 a month. And here's the best part of the, about the story. None of her leaders need her. She's irrelevant to her business. I remember asked me what kind of business. I'm like, I want her business. I want Carrie's business. Yeah. I want to be irrelevant. How many guys with that vision in mind, if you guys go and launch and relaunch so long, you tap root, you dig, you build leaders, that at some point, 10 years from now, they're going to be telling a story about like, you're like a unicorn. Like Amanda. There was once a legend named Amanda. Let me tell you about Beth. Beth used to come on calls. We used to see her. I haven't seen from her. I haven't heard from her for years. I think she bought an island. I want that. Like, I'm like, I can't wait. I tell my team all the time, like, you guys aren't going to have me for forever. So please use me now because I am working myself out of being needed. It's the sexiest thing. I have other entrepreneurs that I know that make great money and they like to talk, you know, compare apples to apples, orange to oranges. I was like, you stop, your check stops. I stop, my checks doesn't stop, at least not for a long, 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 long time. It's an amazing thing. The third thing is expectations. So number one, start with the end in mind. Number two is that this is a launching, relaunching business. It's network marketing. It's not net sit marketing. Net dream marketing. Net contemplate marketing. It's work. It's work. So number three is the expectation. I heard um, from one, uh, from some top leaders that I, are in my company, Crossline, and they said, for a long time, you'll be vastly underpaid. And then for a long time, you'll be vastly overpaid. And my first check in network marketing, my first residual check was $3. How many guys have made more than $3? My first check in my current company was $70, like $78. Takes a while to grow, right? My first residual check, 70, I don't even know how I got one my first month. How did that even happen? How does that work? $78. You're going to be vastly underpaid for a long time, and then you're going to be vastly overpaid. If I told you how much I'd make right now, you guys would fall over for how little I work. Now, I work very smart, but I don't work full time. For a long time, you'll be vastly overpaid. I heard Jeff Roberti, who's made like $100 million in Juice Plus, he said um, that in the beginning, you'll put in 10 hours of work for one hour of pay. And then not long after, you'll put in one hour of work for 10 hours of pay. I like that. It's having the expectation of the fact that you're going to be imbalanced. Now, for some of you guys, you need to figure out what your cycle is and your extension. Let's talk about that. Everybody has a cycle. Everyone has a cycle. Some of you guys, you work one day on, you go one day off. Like, wow, that was exhausting. I need a day of rest. Some of you guys, you're going to work for like a week and then you take a week off. 
A lot of you, you work two weeks and then you take two weeks off. How do I know? Because you are messaging Kaylin and Miranda and Beth and the 15th of the month and you're like, I need to rank again. I need to get my check up. Oh my God, I'm behind. And Beth's like, if you would have showed up the first two weeks of the month, we would be having this dilemma, right? So some of you guys, it's a two week on, two week off. Some of you guys, it's a month on. I've known people that have worked 90 days on and then 90 days later, I'm like, where do they go? What happened to them? I'm telling you guys, if you can stretch, seven figure earners, they've learned how to work for about 12 months. I work about like solid like 11, 12 months. And then most, just so you guys know, I sleep when the baby sleeps. Isn't that the funniest parenting thing? The most ludicrous advice a mother has ever been given. Sleep while the baby sleeps. Okay, okay, that's funny. I think that's hilarious to, to, to say that to anybody because I've babies that before. You do not sleep when the baby is sleeping. You do laundry, you feed, you wash yourself. There's so many things to do. You have bills to pay. Like there's, there's other mouths to, to deal with. It's the funniest thing. But in network marketing, it's true. So I work like 11-ish months. And then most of December, peace, and I recoup. So some of you guys, that might seem like, holy moly, Rachel. Okay, 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 okay. All right. Endurance. It's like me trying to run a marathon right now. I would die. I would purposely contract COVID to die. I'm sorry if that's disrespectful to you. But I could not run a marathon right now. No way. Heck no. You have to build up endurance. So what is your cycle? Write it down. Is it seven days? Is it one day? Is it three days? Is it two weeks? How many, how long can you push yourself to go all in and just do more? Post more, talk to more, follow up more, close more, lead more, inspire more. Show up every single day in your business. And number four, creating personal momentum. And I think this is key. Is you've got to run your own race. How many of you guys ever did track in school? Anybody ever did track and field? Yeah, Jennifer did, Miranda did, okay. So I did track and then I realized very quickly I'm a horrible runner. So this whole call is coming from full circle here. I'm terrible at cardio. So they moved me over to field and I found out that I was an exceptional discus thrower. Probably my arms, whoosh, right? I found out that I was actually really good at shot put on accident. We were at like a meet and they're like, we don't have anybody for women's shot put. And they're like talking to the team. I'm like, I'll do it. Never did it before. I walk up. I got silver. I was like, wow, that was pretty awesome. So I was like, really, I was like, long jump, things like that. Right. And so I was, uh, one of the races I did was the 500 meter relay. So you're in a team, right? And you're passing the little like baton, right? And I hated it. I mean, remember I had to pass the baton. Like I was like, I'm going to trip all over them. It was so stressful. I'm like, put me back in discus. I don't have to worry. Just to spin and throw the thing. Okay. But I remember that when I was training and things like hurdles or any of the normal like field runs, my tendency was to look at the people in the lane next to me. I was so concerned of where she was and where she was that sometimes I would trip, I would fall, I'd take a hurdle to the face, (laughs) legit, (laughs) like really painful. You have to run your own race here. So if you're in a season of your life where you got a baby on your boob, like honestly, like you got a lot going on right now, (laughs) okay? Give yourself some grace. There are things that I can do without child. I don't, there's going to be a time where I'm going to have a child. Yes, yes, ma'am. God, God providing. We're going to have children. That I know I will not be full on at my 25 hours. Like, no way. This is why I'm working so hard right now to afford help. So I have a nanny so I can do a little bit of business. But then I'm going to be full-time mom. So some of you guys got young kids. Some of you, you might be taking care of a family member that's sick or you're a caregiver. My mom is dealing with this right now. My mom is a six-figure earner in my business. It's been so fun to build together. But my stepdad five years ago, four years ago, was diagnosed with early onset dementia. And over progressively, it's very rapid. He has been able to do less and less and less. We're right on that. She has a full-time or part-time caregiver at home three days a week. But we're at that phase right now where he has to go into memory care. And my mom is a driver. 
She's a type A. All she wants to do is build. And she, but she has to resign to the fact that she goes, this is not my season. And she has to battle with that internally. And I said, mom, give yourself grace. Do what you can. I always say this, do your best, let God do the rest. Just do your best, let God do the rest. I hope that doesn't offend all of you guys. I'm a Christian. Like, this is my call. All right. I'm trying to convert anybody here. Do your best, let God do the rest. Change the quote however you feel is necessary and aligns with your values. Every day, just do your best. We got to run your own race. It doesn't matter how fast. I mean, Caitlin's going to crush it this month. I know she's going to do it. I know she's going to make rank. Do not compare yourself to her. I'm sure Miranda's going to rank up too. It's, it's going to happen. You guys are just going to bump up together. Like, it's going to happen. Do not compare yourself. The thief of all joy is comparison. It's the same thing with social media. If you're seeing other people rank up and it's freaking you out, pause them. Don't even look at their profiles. It doesn't matter what they're doing. It matters what you are doing. Don't look up. Don't look sideline. Doesn't matter what your upline's doing. Look down. Look to your team. Look who you can serve. Look who you can help. Do your best every single day. Do a little bit more. Talk to one more person. Grow, get outside your comfort zone and realize, you know what? We're all on different pages of our journey. I might be on page 30 of chapter 30 of my journey. You might be on chapter three. You might say, oh, I, people say, oh, but I wish I could speak as well as you do. And so eloquent. I just did a podcast. Guys like, you're so eloquent. I'm like, oh my God. And I said, well, I've been doing this 15 years. If I wasn't good by now, I should find a different career. Like... If you guys are one year in, give yourself some grace. Double down on the skill. Double down on the mindset. Double down on the activity. Know where you are going with this and never ever quit. You guys have the right leaders. You have the right team. You have the right systems. You have the right products. They're epic. Just go out there and absolutely crush it. I'll leave you guys with this. I said I was launching and relaunching. I said I've gotten imbalanced in many, many, many times. I'm going to challenge you guys with, I'm going to leave you with a challenge. I want you to close out this month and create a story. Doesn't have to be a big story. Could be 500 bucks. Could be your first thousand dollar check. Your first comma club. I want you to create a story. I want you to push yourself outside your comfort zone more than you ever have before. I want you to shock the system. I want you to shock yourself. I want you to create a little mountain of internal victories. Kaylin is super flattering to me and one of the things that many of my friends and uh, online and other fellow networkers will say is I love your confidence. I say, you know why I have so much confidence is because I build a hot, tiny little mountain of internal victories, little mountains of internal victories every day. I do something I didn't want to do. I follow through on a commitment I didn't want to, I didn't want to make. I do the hard thing. In fact, that's actually one of my mottos in life. I do the hard things. I push myself. I'm extremely afraid of heights. I've done insane things. I've never jumped out of a plane, never will. A perfectly good airplane. Are you kidding me? Heck no. But I've done crazy hikes. I've lived on, you know, skyscrapers. Like I've done gnarly things. I've jumped off, done like cave diving. I do the hard things. I want you to start doing a little mountain of internal victories. Do something every day when you say, when you do it, you know, you get that little feeling. You're like, yeah, I did it. You don't have to tell anybody. You don't need to brag. You just start building up that Mount of Eternal Victory, that, that excitement. In training for my 5K, I sent a video to my marathon runner husband. He ran, tw he ran 12 marathons in 2019 I, for fun. <laughs> it wasn't for rich and fame, let me tell you. <laughs> There's no money involved in it. He does it for fun. And I sent him a little video because it's hilarious that I run. And I wanted to show him this. I'm running, well flailing forward. And what I do is I see a monument or a statue or a garbage can or a mailbox. And I run to that. 
I see a little marker and that's my finish line. That's my, I'm going to, I'm going to burst to there because I run and then I, and then I recover and then I run and then, right. And every time I do this run, I, every time I, I try to fix something a little further, it looks a little further and push myself. And so I recorded myself doing my little jog and I says, and I don't think you really can see it because the camera's shaking, right? I'm running. And then all of a sudden you can see it as you get closer, this big black garbage can. And I go, boom, and I tap it, right? When I, and I start, and then I start walking. And I was like, I'd like to share you with you my running strategy. <laughs> he has this whole marathon plan. What's your target this month? What's the little thing that you can do tomorrow and the next day and Friday? What can you do every day? What's the little trash can you can hit? What's, because you guys know when I hit that trash can, that mailbox, you know what happens? A little internal victory. I did it. You want to start to change your life? Start little benchmarks for you to hit and you can do it. I love you guys. Do your best. Let God do the rest. Caitlin, thank you so much for having me on here.